Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our informational session on being a resident assistant 101. It's also affectionately known as RA 101. So probably for the duration of the rest of this webinar, you'll hear me refer to it as um, RA 101. It's definitely less of a mouthful um, than saying being a resident assistant. Um, 101. So uh, my name is Lori Sabata and I'll um, be presenting today along with my colleague Spencer Giese, um, who will be online or is online as well um, with me. So we'll be um, sharing and presenting today and, and helping to answer any of the questions and, and moderating the discussion as we go along. Um, before I go too much farther, I'd like to make sure that our listening audience, so we have the um, audience in a listen-only mode we have a pretty good um, sized group of, of folks online with us today. So um, just want to, and then this will kind of help you familiarize yourself with Zoom too. If you haven't um, attended a Zoom webinar before, you should have a sort of a control panel or truly really more like a strip or a ribbon um, on your screen. Mine's at the top of the screen. Sometimes it's at the bottom. You should see like a little cartoon hand there. If you just click that hand, that lets me know that you can, you can hear my voice and you should be seeing the title screen of my slide that says being resident assistant 101 so if you can say yes to both those things and I see hands raised so um, it looks like all is good on your end so um, I appreciate you doing that thank you so much uh, so um, as I mentioned before um, now that we've done the tech check um, Spencer and I are going to go through um, first we're going to kind of do an overview of um, sort of an outline of the course I'm going to take a couple minutes to sort of actually show you what the course looks like um, inside. So we'll do sort of like a quick demo and we'll click through some screens and talk about some things. Um, we'll jump back into the presentation and talk a little bit more about how the course kind of gets purchased and implemented and how the sort of administrative, administrative functions of the course work. Um, and then we'll take some time at the end for questions. So um, you'll also notice on your control panel or strip or um, whatever you want to call it, uh, there is a box there for Q&A. So if you think of any questions, you don't have to wait till the end to ask your question, just as you think of it. If I say something, you think, oh, I want more clarification on that. Just go ahead and type it in to that box and we'll be sort of monitoring that as we go along. And then um, we'll definitely take some time at the end to, to um, answer as many questions as we can within the hour. I know we want, we have an hour scheduled. Um, so we try to keep within the hour um, as best we can uh, to that. And then we can take time to answer um, questions afterwards as well um, through email or, or any other um, mode that you wish. So I know we have a lot to get through. So I'm gonna stop talking about that and let's talk about um, the course, being a resident assistant 101. So if you signed up for this webinar, you're probably um, have a colleague maybe who has the course already or you're, you're looking for some kind of training that would help supplement what you have. Maybe you don't have training and you're looking for something um, completely to, to replace what you don't have. Um, or you're looking for something that um, you know you might be able to use ahead of time before your resident assistants get on campus, um, whatever your timing is. Um, hopefully, once we review those modules, you know, you'll be able to see if these are a fit for you um, or not. So, um, I can go ahead and advance my slide. Spencer, are the slides showing okay? Slides are showing great, Lori. Uh, the other item, if any of you want to test out that Q&A system, feel free to write me a question. Um, just click it open right now, write me some gibberish, tell me about how great your lunch or breakfast was today. Anything you'd like, just so we can make sure that question and answer setup is working for you all. Oh, there's some gibberish. Thank you for gibberish. <laughs> Appreciate that. And the pizza was on point today. Nice. So glad to hear it. I would love to know the topics you had, but we can continue that on another time. There'll be another and, webinar. Uh, we also have a question that just came in. What is the meaning of life? We're unsure. Um, we're trying to help students one student at a time. And we've got a howdy from Texas. I would say the Q&A system is working. Definitely. Great. All right. Thank you. So I wanted to, I always start by, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't give credit to our four wonderful um, course authors who actually wrote this course. And um, I know that that text is way too small for you to read. I can't even read it. But the point of it is, and it's in the course too as well, but the point of it is, is just to, to make sure that everyone understands that this course is definitely um, was developed by sort of a collaborative of professionals from across the profession. So um, I didn't write it, fortunately. Um, we definitely, um, you know, hired um, um, some authors who would have a variety of perspectives and experience to add to this course. So I just like to start by pointing that out. Um, so I wanted to start by going through just an overview of what's in the course, and then we'll go in and we'll actually look at it a little bit. Um, so the first module is called The World Around Us. And 
basically they go through sort of community what does it mean to be a part of that community big picture community the campus but also your hall your floor um, what does that mean to be a part of that and why is that important um, and that's sort of what really what the world around you uh, means as well and then it goes into some lessons and modules about uh, customer service good customer service and bad customer service um, examples of that and why it's important to um, provide good customer service and what it means you know how does one do that module two is called being an agent of your institution so this goes through the importance of confident confidentiality talks about ethics there's a, a, a couple exercises in there that um, run through some sort of thought-provoking um, exercises about what if I or what would you do if um, that sort of thing um, there are some and I'm going to say there are some policies that we cover in there that are US centered um, we do have a disclaimer in there that says well we know that these are US centered policies that they may not apply to international campuses and that the exercises, um, you know, if they need to be excluded because of that, certainly can be. So it's um, it's part of the course, but if they don't apply to international or just don't apply for some reason, um, it wouldn't hurt the participant by not participating or not reading or you know participating in those exercises. Um, and then talks about what it means to be a good team player and the importance of that. Module three is called Cool Clear Head. And this is where we, this is a meaty module. This really gets into like safety and security, incident report writing, good and bad reports, um, some, some case studies, some good examples of that. Um, there's a, a fun exercise in there that's a video from, I don't know if you are uh, Harry Potter fans, but it's a video from Harry Potter. It's the scene where they get stuck in the Whomping Willow tree and uh, you have to write an incident report for that, which I think is kind of a fun exercise. Um, crisis and emergency response and strategies. I think that's the one I was thinking of where they have some case studies presented in there and then you're asked to react to that um, and conflict management. Module four is um, a module about self and self care. Uh, it's an often overlooked piece um, in RA training, but very important as you know um, about you know being aware of um, good and bad care, which seems like it would be so easy, but it's it's really easy to, you know, when you're, RAs are very busy and it's easy to let that um, go by the wayside. So um, we talk a lot about that, how to get help for yourself when you need it, um, the importance of being a role model, and then kind of brings it all together at the end by asking them to write a personal mission statement. So that's a summary of the four basic modules um, that are in the course. And I'm now going to do my best to drag a screen over so that I can show you the course. Okay, Spencer, are you seeing, I'm going to use you as Absolutely. my- Absolutely. Okay. You are on the main page and this is what anyone entering the course would see. Uh, we are a Canvas-based online learning product. So if this looks familiar to you and your campus and any online courses that you or your students may use, we are also using Canvas. Um, so take it away, Lori. Yes, thank you. So I've switched it over to student view. Um, so I'm an administrator, so I want to show you more of what the students would see. And we'll talk a little bit about um, administrators versus students, the different roles um, a little bit later. But I, you know, I've struggled different times with the webinars and the best way to show people the course. And <laughs> there will be a couple minutes of, you know, some silence, I guess, while I sort of go through some of the screens, because I just want you to see what it looks like um, and you know certainly if, if folks have questions you know let us know and we can go back and look at certain things and I'll, I'm, I'll stop and talk about a couple of things like journal assignments and discussions um, as well so um, obviously it's you know it starts with an overview I'm not going to go through those modules it's you know about learning that sort of thing course introduction um, gives a course overview it overviews the modules which we just did about the course authors page, which I had already showed you. Um, I do want to touch on the journal and I'm going to go ahead and pull that page up. Um, the course has um, what we call journal assignments in them. And I think there's about maybe 15 of them or so spread throughout the modules. And the purpose of the journal assignments, um, they're meant to be reflective exercises. So it's an online journal. Um, we also have an option um, and we tell them here how to submit the online journal. So the majority of our users use, use it online. So what will happen is the answers to these journal assignments will show up in the grade book, which I'll show you a little bit later. And it's up to you as an administrator how you decide to 
look at those or grade those. Most people don't grade them. Um, they're, they're reflective questions. They're sort of meant to get, um, you know, people thinking about different scenarios um, sort of ahead of time before they actually happen. Um, you know, so not everyone grades them, but a lot of administrators like to grade them. Um, and I'll show you some examples of that a little bit later. Another option is to download it as a Word document and have them fill it out as a Word document. And then some like, some like to have the REs turn in the journal as a Word document so they can have it and just read through it as a journal. And then sometimes it's nice to have it that way for the RA because then you sort of have this um, sort of collection of your answers um, should you ever want to go back and look at it. Of course, they, they could look at it in, online as well, but there's just two different ways of doing it, but most people use it online. So I'm just going to go ahead and click through some screens here. Um, discussions. So there are discussions in the course. These are your, you know, typical threaded discussion, kind of like you would see on social media. So again, they're mostly reflective type questions. Um, how would you feel if, was there ever a time where you, you know, that sort of thing. And it's a cohort discussion. So the discussions are, um, they're per group. So if you are a campus, all of, all of the students that are in the discussion are for your campus. They're not from all over the place. So, so if you have a cohort of RAs going through it, this discussion would be just amongst that cohort. So we get some really pretty interested, interesting threaded discussions um, in here. They aren't graded, but um, I know a lot of administrators like to go through and, and sometimes they even give their RAs instructions. Like we want you to reply to at least, reply back to at least three or more threads that other people replied to. So um, there's different ways that you can use the discussion. So those are in there as well. And these are just some sort of instruction, instruction type pages that tell the RA, here's how you access discussions, here's how you use them, that sort of thing. Um, so we're starting off with module one, the world around us. I'm just gonna go ahead and click through and just be quiet for a couple of minutes so that you can see and read and maybe talk amongst yourselves as you're looking through it. And Lori, do you wanna maybe uh maximize that size or oh is it too that, small make that text a little bit larger for our viewers let me see what i can do here zoom in i believe is the term i was looking for is that better that's that is better yes okay there's a journal assignment there you see how they submit the assignment by clicking this button they mark it as done as well the first module has a lot of journal assignments and it has the most I think of any of them. I know I'm going through it kind of fast and you don't have a chance to read everything that's on there but I just want to give you an idea of what's in this module beyond what I described earlier. We also have a number of videos. articles, links to things that they can read. All right, I'm going to jump back to modules and so that we can get through the others. I'm going to just go back and then skim down to module two. And again, I apologize if I cut, cut you right off at something you were trying to see or read. Um, there will always be time to go back and look through some things if we need to. And if you, you know, feel like you didn't see enough or you really, you know, would like a little bit more in-depth look on it, um, our emails are on the slide. We'll show it again at the end when we do questions and answers. So feel free to reach out to us and um, we can definitely, um, we can help you out with a little bit more lengthy um, demo time with the modules. I know it's hard to, to really get a sense of exactly what's in here when I'm overviewing it so quickly. So here we are at module two, agent of your institution. I'm just going back to this one too, like we tell them, you know, certain, sometimes questions are thrown out there, you know, we want you to think about something, but it's not graded. It's just like a, you know, we want you to think about it, act sort of activity, consider something. This is that um, I had mentioned earlier how it's sort of a survey, like an ethics survey. Um, so um, they go through and they take this ethics survey and we can preview it too. 
Um, so they're asked certain kind of questions and then we go through the content and then there's then they take it again at the end. It's not graded um, and answers are anonymous and not shared with anyone. Um, so that's that's always been sort of an interesting um, exercise. So I'm going to submit it even though I didn't fill it out. Submit anyway and move on. And there are no right or wrong answers to it. It's just a exercise. There's a journal assignment after that. Um, I'm going to go back to modules and just skim down um, the topics that are in the module so that you can see those and then move on to module three. Again, I apologize if I'm scrolling around and going too fast. You can see the course is set out very sort of linear in a linear way. So it's not the kind of course where you skip around to different things or that there's a list of different activities to do. It's like you start at page one and you just keep hitting next and you go. And it'll mark off with these green checks that you see at the side here um, that shows that the page is viewed. Um, not every page, well, no, every page has to be viewed in order for the course to complete and for, in order for the um, you know, enrollment to be, you know, triggered that it's completed. Um, there is a final exam at the end that they have to pass with a grade of 75% or better to actually complete the course. And then they have to view every page. Sure. And Lori, let me, let me hop in for a second. So we did it. We've got a number of questions coming in. We've got okay. one I feel is pretty applicable while we're staring at this kind of overview of the course. Mm -hmm. um, a question that came in, how much of the content is pre-populated and how much would we create and deploy on our own? So all of it is pre-populated. Um, so at this point, uh, if I'm understanding the question correctly, there isn't an opportunity to customize or add or remove any content. It just sort of, it is what it is. I think the concept was that we would provide these modules and then people use them in all sorts of different ways. They use some of it or all of it, or sometimes they will give their RAs instructions. And I want, you, I want you to do module one and four only. Don't worry about the rest. Um, so, does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. I, I think the key component is we're, you are not needing to build out these modules. This is more than a framework. This is actually a framework and content that we've built for RA101. Um, so, for you, the user or the administrator, um, you're certainly welcome to go through it. Uh, we've had a number of institutions that have added on or um, done a reflection piece for their students, where students turn it into the administrator, that is a focus or a compare contrast with the policies of the university that's using the RA 101 program, so they can apply it directly to their university. Uh, but this is not content that you need to build. This has been built for you. Yep. Thank you, Spencer. And then uh, we had another quick question. That I. Um, do you purchase all the modules or do you buy just the ones you want? When you are a institution using RE101, these all come to you. So they're all built, packaged, put together. Uh, your students receive all the modules. It's one entire package. Yep. Any others? Oh, many, many questions. Okay. Or if you want to dive in. Um, sure. Is there a way to go through the entire class as an administrator in order to prepare institution specific resources, materials, and or lesson plans to discuss what they learned? Yes, yeah, so I would say, I'm gonna say the majority of the people go through it first as administrators. Um, one or more administrators will go through it ahead of time and become familiar with the content and then prepare, sometimes people prepare their own syllabus. Sometimes I help people that with that, but I actually have a, document that has a list of all, see all these sort of page titles that you see here. I have a list of those and then they use that and they make that into their own syllabus and they say, okay, I want you to do these things. And so I would say for the most, yes, there is an opportunity and most Absolutely. people do that. Yes. Um, question we're getting quite a few questions on is how long does it take to complete the RE 101 course on average? Or, or if that's, if this is easier or harder to break down, how much do each of the modules take? I'm not sure how much it is by module, but I always tell people 10 hours of time. I don't think it really takes that long. I think it all depends on your individual pace. Right. I know when I tell, talk to, so, sometimes I get calls from the RAs themselves. 
they make their way to me and they say, how long does this take? And I say 10 hours and they, oh, it's due tomorrow. I'm like, well, <laughs> and, and, and going to be up all night. And as, you know, and I can talk more from the administrator side of how we've seen institutions use ARIA 101. Many will at first go through as administrator, um, look at the course content, and then uh, piece it into their training plan. So there's a couple approaches, and we will certainly dig into this a bit more in this webinar. There's the approach of you can have your students do this prior to training. So we've had some institutions purchase ARIA 101 in March and April as they're selecting their student staff for the upcoming fall academic year. And then in April, May, or May, have their students take ARIA 101 before they leave for the summer. They've used this as kind of the onboarding to the position. We also have other institutions that will have ARIA 101 be a course that their students go through during actual on-campus training in the August, September timeline, depending on when your institution has student staff training. Um, and they're able to incorporate it into their overarching training plan. So students are meeting and having in-person training times, but also having some independent learning times, which can be a great way to break up the days. Um, one of the cost benefits to having an online delivery method is you're not needing to reserve space on campus to fit all of your student staff members. Uh, we found it's a, it's a great cost savings. There's, we're seeing more and more institutions are starting to charge their residence life departments to use those big spaces on college campuses to hold trainings. And we also know that if you take the amount of people hours spent to have a staff come together for an hour long training, that number can be staggering in terms of cost just to have professionals all in the room together overseeing their student staffs. Um, and then a third delivery option, we've, or third delivery method we've seen quite a bit is that pre-starting uh, fall training. So if your training was to begin August 15th, we've had a lot of students go through the course July 15th, August 15th, and take it right prior to arriving for a training. Again, it really comes down to your institution's policies, your student employment policies, and really how you want to craft it in to your training schedule. Uh, but it's a great way to get your students out of the typical lecture hall classroom setup and allow them to independently learn. Uh, we've seen, we've really seen student learning change significantly. I'm sure you all have on your campuses too uh, in recent years, and we have students that want to learn digitally and independently as opposed to sitting in a lecture hall. Um, especially some of those hot lecture halls in the middle of August can be pretty daunting when you have a, a large staff there. Um, let's see, other questions that have come up as we've been talking. When was this created and how up-to-date it is? This is, this is a three-year-old course. Um, as course administrators, we're continually updating the course, going through it. We also accept and take feedback from institutions that go through it every year. And, continue to evolve and enhance the course. Um, and thank you to Lori for you know, her critical work in making sure that the course continues to be updated. We continue to update language. Um, and really, it's also feedback from our members who are taking it in terms of what they'd like to see enhanced and done in the course. So there is my Spencer Q&A corner. We will jump back to that later on in the webinar. I'm going to throw it back over to you, Lori. Yeah, thanks. And I was just kind of going through some screens in the background as you were talking, and we made it over to module three to cool, clear head. So I'm going to go ahead through um, some of these pages. And we'll continue to look at questions too as they're coming in. Thank you for doing that, Spencer. It's super helpful. Oh, one, one, one last question while I've got you on the line. Uh, can the administrator go through the entire class before making the purchase for the entire RA staff? Yes, you can. Yeah. We have a we have a version set up for you to be able to do that. A lot of people take advantage of that. Yes, and and honestly, we understand. You you want to be able to put your eyes and your mouse clicks on a product before implementing it into a training program. So we understand that you want to see it. 
I um, would too. I would too. I would too. Just like you want to test drive a car before you buy it. Typically, though, there's Carvana, so maybe not everybody does that anymore. Um, are there any specific computer requirements for the course, like Java or something similar? Um, other than I would say it's best viewed in Chrome and the ability to download some Word documents, not Word, they're mostly PDFs, not Word, um, unless you want to do the journal, there's a, the journal yeah. is a Word document. Most people don't use that. But, and, and really what we've seen a lot of in terms of those journals, we have the journal built in to this. That's another place where administrators have come in and created their own uh, type of journal for students to use, maybe on a, put a university letterhead on there, a department logo on the journal you want students to fill out and then return to their staff supervisor. Um, we see that as a way that schools have had their students be able to check in and show progress. Um, I've also seen institutions do that with Google Docs actually where on a couple of Google campuses we've seen uh, the, the staff supervisors have students in a Google Doc format go through and answer those processing questions so the staff supervisor can click in and see that their students are progressing through the course and they are processing what they're learning. Aren't they going through incident report writing? There's quite a bit on this. Examples. I'm going to jump back over to the modules so you can see the list of titles that are under module three. There we go. Okay, we were down here, we were in incident reporting. There's quite a bit left. Um, you know, there's crisis emergency response strategies. Let's do some case studies here I mentioned before. Um, how to make referrals. Let's see if I can go through these so we can get to the last module because I want to make sure I leave time for us to spend on um, the administrative side and the implementation side because there's always a lot of questions about how the course gets implemented so I want to make sure we cover that and we know that there will always be probably follow-on questions after that as well and that's okay too. Um, so I'm gonna to go to module four. So this is the one on self and self-care. I think this is probably the lightest module. I mean, this one, you know, you could go through this one pretty quickly, but it's a good module. It's an important one. We talked about the importance of taking care of yourself taking care of your mind and your body. Just good reminders. This is the part I mentioned before about seeking help, when to seek help, where to go for it, strategies for healthcare. Time management, that's a thing. Money management is a thing. bringing it all together and it kind of concludes with talking about being a role model and then um, this is where we end with a journal assignment for writing a personal mission statement to guide your life which I think is a neat way to sort of wrap up the course and end that portion of it. So that is a very quick um, sort of peek at what's inside the course. So again I apologize that it was so quick but there's a lot of content in there as you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the screen away and go back. Is the PowerPoint sh showing back up there, um, Spencer? Yes, the PowerPoint is back up and running. Great. I'm going to go over to course implementation and sort of how does this all work. So 
Spencer already mentioned that we use a we use Canvas as our learning management system. I know a lot of campuses use Canvas, so you may or may not be familiar with it, but that is where the course is housed. Um, so let's talk a little bit about purchasing tiers and we call them tiers and they're basically like you know different levels depending on how many RAs you may have so it's sort of a bulk um, purchase and there is a lot more detail on our website about this that includes the pricing and some more information about it um, so you may have already visited that and looked at that but I want to talk a little bit how about how they work so um, obviously tier one just for example is the smallest tier so if you have zero to 30 RAs um, the important thing that I like to tell everyone about the tiers is to remember to include your admins. Um, it becomes more and more important, I think, as you get up into the, you know, when you've got 60 to 100 RAs on campus, you're going to have quite a few, they're split into groups probably, so you're probably going to have quite a few admins. So, you know, if you're doing a count and you're saying, boy, I've got 98, I'll just make it into the tier of 100, remember you've got those admins because they need, it works on a, like a coupon or a tokening system the admins need tokens too. So always remember to include those um, in your count. Um, and I believe that's a uh, second bullet after that. I had already gone over yeah, the, the code. So, so what happens is when you decide on a tier, you purchase the tier, um, you will get assigned a code. It's one code and it will be the same, same code that the administrators and all of your RAs will use the same code. So there's a communication sort of rollout process and over, over the past couple of years that we've done this, I've sort of collected some best practices on that. I have a couple campuses who are willing to share with me, like, here's how I communicated this to my admins and staff. Like, here's how to log into this course. Here's how to, how, how to redeem your code and here's how it works. And so I'm happy to be able to share those. Um, if you decide to purchase and want help with the implementation on it, um, I certainly have that information. Um, it involves an account setup process for both the admins and the RAs because you have to be able to log into it and to be able to, as with most systems, to be able to log into something, you need an account. Um, so most of you who are on the webinar may already have accounts with Aku Hawaii. Um, if you don't have one and you want to be an admin, um, you will probably need to make one. Um, and all of the RAs will need to make accounts as well. So that means if you have 300 RAs, they will all have to create an account on our Akuhu website and make themselves a username and a password, and that gets them access into the course. Um, they have to go through um, sort of a, a purchase process with a coupon code where they, once they log in, they go and they, you know, put the course in the cart, they use the coupon code, it activates the code for them. They don't pay anything because once you've purchased the tier, the course is already paid for. Um, and then um, they log right into the course and they can start taking it basic process and how it works and we have detailed information that we send out about all of this and I also do um, short trainings for administrators too so you know a lot of times people purchase the course and say okay now what you know even though you've given me all this information like I still need a little help figuring out what are my next steps and what do I do so I'm happy to jump online and have that conversation I do it all the time and I think it's really helpful and it also kind of gives me a chance to sort of meet you too and meet your administrators and we kind of get to know each other a little bit um, because we'll be working together um, as as you implement the course. Um, I have a bullet up there that says eight weeks for course completion. So what that means is that this code gives each RA eight weeks to complete the course. So from the time that they go in and they activate that code, they have eight weeks to finish the course. Um, after eight weeks, they expire. So they still have access to the course. They can still log into it. They can still see the material. But if they haven't completed that final exam that I mentioned earlier, where they have to get a 75% or better to be able to complete the course, then they wouldn't be able to do that once it's expired. So that's what that means. Um, they're sort of independent of each other. So it means that if like, say you have 60 RAs and 20 of them start on one date and then oh, another 10 start on another date, they don't affect each other, it's individual. So just because some people started earlier won't mean that other people have less time. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Um, okay, so, and then as I mentioned, I know I went through that kind of fast. So if you have questions, please let us know. Um, you know, we'll send, we send out detailed information um, on all of this. I wanted to talk about um, administration. So once you, you know, purchase the course, you decide who your admins are gonna be, we talked um, some earlier about, I think it's a great process, 
or business practice for the administrators to go through the course first and spend some time learning it and getting it set up and deciding how they're going to use the course once their RAs get into it. Um, so I will assist you on getting the administrators set up in the system. They need to activate the codes, log into the course first. I have to assign the role. It's called RA11 faculty. Um, and then you can go in and you have some special privileges as, as an administrator. You can monitor the progress of the students um, as they're completing the journal assignments. You can read the journal assignments. You can grade them or mark them complete or incomplete. Um, you'll see the quizzes, the final exams in the grade book. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Um, you can see, I mentioned you're viewing the grades and marking them. Um, once you have, once the students have completed the course, though, you can't grade the assignments because it's completed. Um, and then the journal assignments um, are uploaded as well, so you'll be able to read those. And you can also download those too um, as a one long PDF if you want to just say, hey, I want to see what all my students did for this journal assignment. You can download that. Um, I wanted to mention too that you'll be, um, you know, we have, I think last year we had about 90 different campuses that purchased RE 101. So they're, each campus is in as a separate group. So I just want to make that clear so you don't think that, you know, it's all one big course with campuses all in there together. They're actually separated. Um, so that's how that works. So you only see grades and discussion posts from your group. They're not mixed in. Um, just an important implementation implementation point. I know you're not going to remember all this and it doesn't really matter as much until you get to the point where you've purchased the course, but there are some parts in the instructions that the RAs get about choosing the right organization when they're setting up their account that are very, very important because that's how the students section. I just mentioned they go into, you know, separate, everyone's in their campus in separate sections. So there's a process by which that happens. So setting up the account in the right way is very, very important. And that's something we cover together in administrator training um, once you get to that point. Students only see and participate in discussions with other students from their campus. Again, we send out detailed instructions on this and I sample communications is what I was referring to um, earlier as I have some samples of how other campuses have done a really nice job in saying, I bought this course, now here's what people have to do. Um, and I want to take a minute to um, take a look at the, that's not what I want to look at. That's our database. Can you see the grade book, Spencer? I'm sorry, I keep using you to. This is what I'm here for, absolutely, yep. So you <laughs> okay. see 20 students in there, you've got your grade book. You can see the scores that they earn over the course of the content they're covering. Correct. Yep, and I'm, I'm sort of impersonating one of our um, administrators. Um, Brock University has done this three years in a row now. Um, and so this is their grade book and it, you know, all of the students that are in um, the grade book that Amanda views are all of her students, no one else's. And basically you can see, I, it's really small. I know this is really small, but if you can see, if you can see, these are all the um, assignments and they show up in this grade book and you can rearrange these in different, so see how journal assignment two is here and this is 15, like I would drag 15 all the way down to the end. I'm not going to do it because it's her grade book, so I don't want to mess her up but you can drag these around um, you know, in the correct order that you want. And you'll see that the final exam um, down here is all the way at the end. So these are the final scores. Um, and then you can also, um, and I wanna be careful here because these are people's grades, but um, you can click on here and you can actually drill down into the grades and you can read the journal assignments um, this way. Okay, so it's not going to let me do that, probably because the student has completed. So, or they're probably, actually, I think their account probably might be expired because they're um, well past the eight weeks. But you would click on this and it would, it would bring up the assignment. Yeah, you can see it now. So that's kind of how the grade book works. That was the first journal assignment there. Um, let me go back to the grades. And you can see the way you navigate around. I know I call these breadcrumb links, but it's almost like each page is sort of like its own little web page. It's, I mean, it's, it's fairly simple to move around um, into. And so that's, this is how the gradebook works. So as an administrator, you would, have, you would have access to all of your students. Um, I think there are some options in here. You can message students. You can download the submissions that I mentioned before. So if I wanted to see how all of my students responded to this particular journal assignment, I would be able to download all of those. So there's a lot of different things you can do in there. You can you know, mark the journal assignments complete, which I like to do. 
Um, some people like to give them, you know, grades and comments and, you know, some people really like to look at the journal assignments and say, I want to see that people really left substantive, thoughtful answers to these. So that's how that works. Um, I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint. And we do have a couple of questions that have come up as we've been okay. going through that yeah. portion. So um, a really key question that's come up, do the admins of the course for the institution only have an eight week window as well? Technically, but I can adjust that because most admins, as Spencer was saying, will get in you know early in the year before anyone gets there. And so I extend those. Right. But it's, it's not automatic, so we would have to talk about it, say, oh, I really need my admins to be in from March through, you know, September. I can do that. And then again, when we're looking at tier numbers, um, basically a tier, we're looking at that seat count. So our tiers are based on um, the amount of RAs and administrators that are, that are in the course? Yes. Correct. Yep, it's very important to include the administrators in that count. Right. So they need to use it. They need to use coupons. Okay. So was did you have more? That's where we're at for now. Okay. I move on to the next slide. Oh, we're at questions. Well, okay. We can we can keep going with questions. Oh shucks. So, um, oh, this was a fun one that came in. Uh, was the ten hour estimate for the entire course or just each module? The whole course. The entire course. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Wait, that would, we're not looking to give your students a 40 to 50 hour online course. We're not that good at our jobs. We're okay though. Um, and really, you know, again, the key components of an online course like this, we've picked, we've picked topics that really were member generated topics. This was not Lori and I sat around the table and said, hey, what should we do for RA 101? These were member generated topics that we were told, hey, these are universal topics that no matter what institution we're at, we train our students on these policies and they're pretty similar across the board. The topics that are not in this course are those that are gonna be very campus specific. And that is really where you still need to have either an in-hall training or an all-staff training to cover those, those really um, nuanced pieces of training that are specific to your institution. And also taking the time um, during training to team build, to connect, because ultimately, you know, the, the success of a student staff is how well they can collaborate and connect and work as a team throughout the year, whether that's through, you know, building community with residents or enforcing policies in the hall, how can they be on the same page? So really um, take that daytime when you can be together and build your groups, build your teams, um, and then also teach those really campus specific items. Well, let's see, I've been having a couple questions to them and let's take a look. Um, and then can administrators insert journal reflections or questions specific to their institution? And that's where we talked early about, earlier about how you can customize the reflection journal to be based on your institution. So at the very beginning of the course, there's a, basically it's a download uh, journal. And rather than having your students download that journal, you could provide every one of your student staff members that's going through the course your specific journal to go through. So, hey, for, for module one, answer these three questions that are specific to Northwestern State University. Um, things like that. So, yes, you can, you can have those reflections be via Google Doc, Word document. That's really up to how you want to deliver and accept those back so you can see they're being completed. Um, question that came up, Lori, are there topics related to diversity and inclusion included in this course? Um, there are, and I'm going to, I'm going to search through it and look for it. So let me look through that. Um, if there are other questions. Certainly, I do have another one that's come in. Um, we are a larger school with about 300 RAs. Can we break up our group of 300 RAs into smaller groups so it can be more intimate? There are some ways to do that. 
and that, that's not the first time no, that I've had right. that request. <laughs> and those are the times you work with Lori, and she's so great, and I'm sure she would love to find a way to set up sections for you. Yep. So you can have the best experience with your students in this course. Yep, there's a group function in it that can be used, and so that would be something we could talk about and sort of demonstrate like how that looks and how that works and see if it it was would be something that would use you be able to use for that. And I'm looking for the diversity topics. I mean, it, so there isn't like, you know, a specific section just on that. It's sort of weaved in and out and things. I think RA201, which I was actually going to bring up, um, has a much bigger section on that, right. on the entire module. Yeah. And at the, end, at the end of the day, the, the reason that the course is developed the way it is, while yes, we weave into the topics, that is best an in-person learning conversation on your campuses. Having students go through a diversity inclusion informational online course doesn't have the impact that you really need when you're training your students. So we recognize that can be a hard topic for some campuses uh, to either train on or to facilitate but that really needs to be the in-person work that's done there. But I don't want to steal your thunder, Lori, because I know you want to talk about RA201. I know what's around the corner. Yes, RA201 is around the corner, and I can even, I can do a sneak peek of it, if you'll give me just a moment. Let's be like. Lori, we've never shown anyone a sneak peek of RA201. We haven't. Never, like, and I'm not even being like facetious. We never have shown anyone a preview of RA201. We, we really haven't. Um, so I'm going to um, go find that. I have so many screens open right now. Uh, and then uh, while, while you are searching that, uh, a question that came in, how do we gain, how would one gain access to test drive the course before we purchase? So, on email the screen, us. Right. On the yeah. screen right there, you see Lori's email address, L Sabata, so L S O B O T A at Akuo I dot org. And we will also send out an email after this webinar to all the attendees, because we have our list of attendees. We'll send out an email after this thanking you for your attendance and then also connecting you to our email addresses. That's a great way to reply to that email and connect with us and work on getting that test drive set up. So RA201 is not done yet, but just to give you a quick overview of what is going to be in it, it's soon to come, soon to be released. Um, this course has includes some, we do a lot of pre-assessment and post-assessment work in this. So we ask questions first, go through the content and then ask them again and try to measure some learning. So the first module is all about self-awareness um, and social justice. Um, this is where we kind of really get into diversion, inclusion, and equity, um, conflict and bias, um, self-care again, and stress management. We go into that topic again, um, advocacy, leadership. Second module, again, you know, so you can see the post assessments. Um, is about student awareness, so mental health concerns. This one's really mostly about mental health concerns, um, which is a huge issue, as we know. I mean, I don't have to tell you that for sure. Um, so it goes, it takes a little dive into depression and anxiety. Um, so that it, I don't think it's meant to make anyone an expert on these topics, but it's an overview to know how they, um, to, be, to make them aware that these could be issues and how it impacts you as an RA. Um, so addiction, RA role, making referrals. Um, so that's module two. Module three is about team awareness. So this is where we get into, again, um, teamwork, experience, staff engagement, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, resolving conflict again. Um, and then module four, putting it all together. Um, so transition awareness, positional skills, um, ethics. So this is one of the shorter um, modules and then putting it all together at the end. So I don't want to, you know, it's not ready yet, but I did want to let folks know that this is something that will be rolling out soon. I think within probably in ne the next month or so um, once we complete it and, and get it out there. So I wanted to make sure you were aware that it's going to be an option that's going to be coming. So this is obviously for the returning RA. I don't know, Spencer, if you had any more you wanted to say about that. No, I just think we, um, 
we recognize that as more and more institutions are um, utilizing RA 101 in your courses on your campuses, that the second year um, you have students that don't want to go through it again. So find it, and it, it's not as applicable. It's not. So being able to offer them a product so they're also going through an online learning environment as your first year RAs are, it just feels very equitable and it also helps those second year staff members or third year staff members be touching on more advanced topics that they should be able to be ready for and experiencing as they return to staff. Um, so a question we had coming in with that, will there be deals, I love deals, so, will there be deals to package RA101 with RA201? I think there will be, well, you know, should we call and, them and, deals? Well, <laughs> and I would say at the end, at I, man, that is a thing I say way too often at the end of the day. At the end of the day, um, you are going to be, you know, you would be purchasing seats for your campus, for your res life department, and we'll have the ability to say, okay, and typically it'll be to a campus that has been with us for RA 101 already. Um, okay, well, we identified that you had your students go through RA 101 last year. Now you had 300 students. You're saying that 300 went through last year and 100 of them are returning. So then we would work with you to get you 200 codes for RA 101 and 100 codes for RA 201. But yeah, it'll be really fun. I mm -hmm. can't wait. As, but we'll give great we'll get great content provided for your students so they can be learning outside the classroom independently and ultimately you all will have more time to work with those campus specific policies and to team build and to grow together Ooh, is there a way for us to be alerted about ra201 these people are hyped Lori. Hyped. oh yes definitely because now um you know, we'll definitely, we'll be sending out the recording of this webinar. So, and we know who obviously is on the webinar. So we definitely would reach out and let you know when that is ready. And we're working really hard on getting it wrapped up and reviewed and ready to go so that we can do that. Great. All right. Y'all are a great group, just for the record. <laughs> I've really loved interacting with you on the Q&A and thanks so much for the content that you all have driven and really we, whether you know this or not, Akua is really a member driven association where your feedback goes so far in our development of what we do. Um, our online courses that we continue to develop really come from our membership wanting, you know, the opportunity to learn independently through those means to continue their professional development. ARIA 101 is an example of that, as are our newest, our new courses that we continue to release for professional staff to take. Um, another question that came up, will you be developing materials for resident directors or residential coordinators? Uh, tough question, I'm not sure necessarily what we're trying to get at. What I will tell you, as a shameless plug, we do have a recently released RA supervision course, um, online course that I highly recommend, um, especially you consider having entry level or new staff come coming to your department go through. And it's certainly great for those new to supervision um, professionals or even a great opportunity for graduate students in your departments who may supervise student staff to go through. But RA supervision is really an independent course that is directed toward that entry level professional that's supervising students early on in their career. It's a dynamite course, a lot of content in there. Um, and we've received outstanding feedback about the experiences of those who've gone through it. Sorry, I don't know why it's loading and, so and, slowly. And Lori, Lori's pulling it up for you. So just another option. And we, yeah, it's a, it is a, it's a pride and joy, a pride and joy course in my mind. I love this one. It's a great, it's a great uh, course.
course, an educational opportunity for those who could use a little professional development in that area or just want, you know, a deeper education on supervision. It's one of those areas that I think in our higher programs that we touch on and we throw people into the fire of learn how to supervise by supervising and having more tools available can help us all be more successful. Someone asked and, if this is available to test drive. Yes, it is. It is, yes. So if you are an administrator in your department and you'd like to take a look at RA supervision as something that you would share or have some of your professional staff members go through, absolutely. We'd be happy for you to test drive that as well. There's a lot of good stuff in here. There's a lot of great stuff in there. There's a lot of member voices in this course, which yeah. I like. Yeah. All right, well, I do want to recognize that we are reaching uh, the end of our time for this webinar, time slot that we assigned it. Uh, we'll be sending out a follow-up email. Thank you for your attendance. You'll have our contact information there. Um, and we are certainly happy to keep this conversation going. Yes, thank you, Spencer. And thank you to everyone for spending the hour with us and hanging in there. Um, while we demo the, um, the course, I hope that we answered all of your questions and that you got some information that you needed to make some informed decisions. So um, our emails are here. Um, we're here and, you know, happy to answer any questions that you have. So we'll, we'll be ready for that to come into our inboxes. So I want to wish everyone um, have a great and happy afternoon. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Bye, Spencer. Bye, Lori.